Mr. Santiago and CPS staff, I'm here this evening. We'll be again in front of you just in a few days to post the closure of William H. Prescott Elementary School and to support all these families and teachers that are here this evening to support keeping Prescott open. Since I became alderman of the 32nd Ward in 2007, I've made an effort to work with CPS officials to improve all of our local schools, giving special attention to the ones that need it most. Prescott School Attendance Area, like the ward as a whole, has experienced significant transformation over the past few years. And the outside of the school, like the inside, bears little resemblance to the days of old in ways most people could not have imagined. Over the past three years, Prescott has done things necessary to improve while it grows in size. With strong input from the neighborhood and a resurgence of interest by parents here tonight and many others around the ward, it is now moving rapidly to improve both scores and, by my estimation, it will be a prominent school in the ward, if not the north side, sooner than CPS can imagine. Consideration must also be made for the large number of families moving into the area, something I think that CPS is likes to see. For 100 years, the area was a bustling manufacturing district. And over the past four to five years, those factories have been replaced by hundreds of homes with more in the planning stages. I've included aerial views and maps for your perusal and, I, and to show you the recent housing developments built, which number in the hundreds. Our census, no census or CPS data can perceive the high volume of residential development that has taken place and what is on the horizon for the 32nd Ward and Prescott's attendance area. <coughs> While we know that 40 families tried to move back into a pre-K program, the data does not show what I see every day, that there is an imminent need for this school to remain at the heart of this neighborhood. Today I can look out of my office and see the dense new residential development that borders Prescott. It's a bustling neighborhood full of predominantly young couples and families nearing the age that will see them attending this school in the near future. Sometimes leading is an easy, as, as easy as reading to kids or handing out bags with partnering businesses. In this case, it is old leadership provided by a resurgent group of parents on the LSC and Prescott Parents Group, teachers committed to children, and also by Principal Roach, who has taken the bold steps needed to bring encouragement for success that we all know exists in each of these families, children, and teachers. And sometimes bold leadership comes with a sacrifice. And if the battle for quality education is a social justice cause of our time, as CPS Administrator Ron Runcie has stated, then the battle is being undertaken right here in the heart of our neighborhood, right here at Prescott. And bold leadership is represented by the principal, who attends our ward principal meetings and shares with us bold ideas and applications that will make these kids at Prescott more successful. Sacrifices of extra time and care by all parties are apparent, and we see the positive changes in the faces of the families, the children, and the teachers. There are new after-school programs and weekend events that attest to this growing commitment. Their mutual leadership is shifting the direction of the school, and the only result will be an ever-increasing <coughs> set of ISAC scores, of parent-teacher involvement, and ultimately, well-educated children ready to succeed in the world outside their doors. If we, are if we, as elected and appointed officials, are truly determined to dramatically transform public education in this city, we can use Prescott's recent transformation as the foot in the door to building a school system that works for all children. My comments are just the beginning. And I open the door to many of the other families here tonight who are going to speak to all of the other positive aspects of Prescott. <coughs> Our office has received hundreds of emails and phone calls, which I've brought here tonight and I sent to you, which all make the case for keeping Prescott open and thriving and only becoming greater over time. I encourage all of you on the entire Board of Education to look beyond what you see on paper, look beyond the numbers, and start the true transformation of our schools and our children by keeping Prescott open. I thank you for your consideration tonight and open the floor for all the families and parents who are here and teachers who want Prescott to remain open. Thank you all. I want to submit these emails as well. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
school. When I was hired as principal a year and a half ago, I was given very clear instructions by the local school council and the then area instructional officer to improve immediately Prescott School's enrollment and academic achievement. The Prescott community and I took these charges very seriously. We have worked together to turn around the school in less than two years. It is now a sought-after school full of vibrant learning. Conceptually, the need to close schools for underutilization is understandable. But Prescott has specific circumstances that make the proposal problematic. I request, I request that the Prescott brief to support keeping Prescott School open be submitted into the record on behalf of the local school council, the faculty, and the staff. If you will find, oh, in it you will find exhaustive data and compelling reasons to keep Prescott School open, including one, the school does 